Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us here at All the Things Podcast, presented by Euphonic Creations. We are still in the rabbit hole phase, guys. I don't know what it is about me. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's a lot wrong with me, I do know. But we're we're not leaving this phase anytime soon. I know it's it's the unsexy version of media, but it's the informative version of media. And this is a need to know basis, and you all need to know these things. So we're gonna get into it. First, we're going to hear a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. For almost the past thirty years. Nutrimart has been one of the leading vitamin, supplement, health brands, and a pillar in the San Diego community. Now boasting eight stores in San Diego, this family-owned brand has a full-service online store for those of us in this part of the country, and they cater to all athletes, crossfitters, health nuts, Yo Mama, Bo Jackson, Frodo and his hobbits, Han Swolo, Darth Sith Pack, coaches, and a plethora of so many different sports enthusiasts across the country. And like those that order this product from coast to coast, you too can use Nutrimart for all your health needs. Find all the best national brands in vitamins, meal replacements, testosterone, libido enhancers, greens, herbs, protein bars, fat loss aids, muscle builders, and more. And order today from NutrimartUSA.com. That's NutrimartUSA.com. We'll put the address on the screen below and you can start your order today. Don't miss out now. Go to NutrimartUSA.com. Check out their vast array of products and order today and get your swole on, people. Now back to the show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to All the Things Podcast, presented by Euphonic Creations. I have a question for you. What happens when, <clears throat> when you get your way? I'm gonna, gonna pos- I want you to stick with me now. I'm going gonna, gonna to posit a few questions. What happens when you get everything that you ask for? Think about that, because I'm going to take you into a rabbit hole that's going to start with, it's not going to just stay there, it's going to start with with activism, the great evil of our time, (laughs) and it's going to go into certain things, homelessness, drugs, some of the law, everything like that, but it's going to start with activism, because the thing about it is, activism nowadays is... Nope. No bueno. So when I'm I'm talking about or when I'm asking you what happens when you get your way, it, it's it's something that you have to ponder deeply because I'm I'm gonna go into this beautiful gem of a city, well it, it used to be, that got their way. And they got their way through activism. Okay? And it, there's a whole snowball that formulated into an avalanche, and you're going to see, you're not going to see theory here. Like, I have clips of real-time video from real-time journalists, a guy I really respect and watch his channel a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's something to behold. It's an American tragedy, really, guys. Uh, and when I'm talking about activism, here's the thing about it, because we need this particular form of social unrest. We do need on both sides. I'm talking about leftists. I'm talking about conservatives. Well, not so much with the left. Some, some. But we need activism, guys. Activism has always been necessary. It provides clarity in any two-tier community slash state where there's a, a, a power hierarchy. Uh, activism, or shall I say activism, how it used to be, it provided that clarity. The left and the right wing activism, how it plays today, is a detriment to society, not an asset. It's no longer an asset because it no longer provides clarity. And that's the one thing we really 
clarity and justice. That's the, uh, we we relied on activism for those things when the powers that be got too big for their britches or uh, they climbed the ladder so high they didn't have to look down anymore or you know it's it, vice versa by the way because the way people are treated just because they are in power there's a disconnect there as well everything has balance that's what activism provided balance the one thing it used to champion anyway was 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 clarity and and any abuse of power authority wherever the light of truth needed to be shined that activism brought that forth and let me clarify myself because when i say abuses of power everybody will say that if you have money and you're in office yes you have all the power and, and while that may be true to the highest extent do you know how unfair it is to the people that are up there on pedestals and whether rightfully so or not we're talking about government officials we're talking about people that studied went to school they went to the military they lived a almost perfect life or try to anyway to run for office and be this face of this city or this country or the state or whatever uh it, the me too movement have, has knocked a lot of people down off their pedestals okay so there's a balance of power that's come up there rightfully so but also some people that shouldn't have been attacked and lost everything have, have done exactly that okay so we're going to talk about that. And when we talk about balance of power or, or authority, when you get a little bit of authority, and that's those of you who, whether you are up there or not, it's it's become very easy for you to abuse that. And, and, and we'll go into that as well. But the reason activism has been knocked off in terms of a sincere and righteous form of social disruption is because it's it's now disrupting something for disruption's sake. It's it's useless. To be honest, activism today is completely unsustainable. It doesn't provide that clarity anymore. It's just a loud and forgive me. It's loud and stupid, mostly. It's a rap battle. That's what activism is right now. It's it's two people standing taking turns on the mic, yelling at each other. For the most part, I'm not talking about all activism. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the clips we're going to look at in uh, some of these factions. Some of these factions where you'll hear um, acronyms like CHAZ, C-H-A-Z, look it up, or CHOP, C-H-O-P, instead of COP. Capitol Hill Occupy protest. That was the one of the main protests that when they were, quote-unquote, kicking, kicking, Cops out of their city. Right. You hear me? The civil unrest so disruptive that will kick city cops out of an area of your city where they can't come in America. Not a third world country, not a socialist country, not a communist country. Here in America. And we haven't even dealt with the trauma of that in terms of a country, although we know a little bit about it. We're too busy in the traumas of today worrying about the traumas of tomorrow as well because everything sucks. <laughs> Go eat some poisonous food. <laughs> yeah. um, it's not activism when it's a shouting match by the unorganized. Or the unthought through. Activism in the 60s, if they overthrew anything, they had a plan together. And what they did when they got in power is they were able to implement their ideals because of the ideas that apparently were, or not apparently, but truthfully were, uh, were putting them, that were treading on them. You know, and I'll tell you, when you are in a successful, successful activist mob or whatever, what you're going to have to realize is that if you win, you have lost, you have forfeited the right 
So now call back out and ask those people that you just beat down or beat and got out of power and instilled yourself unjustifiably, not democratically. Activism, you know, subverts dem democracy sometimes. You know, this is no. So you lose the, the right to ask the other side for anything if you win. That's why you have to be prepared. Before you even get up there on your soapbox and open your mouth. But it's just a loud mob mentality having spotlight seeking attention whores that are trying to be activists now. We're not seeking justice because when you seek justice is one thing. Maybe if you're trying to seek a social justice. I know this is not going to be popular with the, with the liberal crowds and it all depends on the, the language. Just hear me out. Forget about these $5 phrases that get you all excited, but I don't want quote-unquote social justice. You know why? Because you demean the very word justice when you put an adjective in front of it like that. Justice is already the deepest form or the deepest meaning it could ever be. Putting social in front of it changes it. It doesn't make it more powerful. It weakens it. I don't want your truth or my truth. I want the truth. You know, I don't I don't want any type of help in front of a word that's so powerful with absolute meaning that speaks power that, that speaks truth to power. Because here's what we do. We'll put our own spin on things and think we make it better, in, in which case we don't. And then you lose the battle before the war even starts. Or you, you lose the war before the battle even starts. Forgive me. So I want you to pay attention to some of those acronyms. And we're going to go into watching some of these things. Because I'll tell you what. There were a lot of people not too long ago shouting defund the police. True story. I know you remember this. There were a lot of people shouting Pigs in a blanket, something or another. Now, there has been <clears throat> more than a few abuses of power where police are concerned. And I get it, people. I get it. I really do. I mean, like, look at me. I obviously get it. And I have my own stories. But when we call for something like justice in these individual cases, we do want just to serve, and we want to serve properly and swiftly. But too many people generalize now. You know, generalization is the enemy of progress. So when you generalize and you lump everybody together, you should not say a word when, and I don't care if you're the highest of the height in terms of education or prowess in one field or another, one vocation or another, when people that look like you cause a whole bunch of crap and they group you in with those people, you shouldn't say anything. If you group, like, for instance, all police in together and you want to defund the police, that's like believe all women. Okay, that's another $5 phrase. Listen, I'm going to believe people that tell the truth and where the truth is proven. I mean, I know there's been a lot. People have tried to overcorrect things. And this this is the society of overcorrection. And overcorrecting always leads to tragedy. Always. We're going to go into this uh, next clip here. And we're going to talk about a few things. But it all started with the activists here. And I want you to think about this in conjunction with the other thing I asked you at first. Because you can always use this in your own life. What happens when you get exactly what you want? And what has happened? That's a question that if anybody feels like answering, you can't answer. Something that you wanted so badly and you and you got it. Give me the aftermath. Give me the give, give me the particulars. Give me the cliff notes of what happened after that. That's that. OK, so we're going to go to this clip here and we're going to watch it. For about, it might be a 10 minute clip or whatever. It's very informative. So we're going to watch this together. And I want you to tell me exactly what you think, okay? All right, excellent.
met. We got back in the car and headed back to Capitol Hill, but Jonathan gave me a warning of what we needed to be prepared for. I've been dealing with so much hate from just the activist class, the far left in this city. I mean, I've been doxxed. I just kind of recorded some phone calls I received. I just thought it was kind of hilarious. You know, here's what some of the folks said to me. I would really watch your back while you're out there doxing everybody. Like a threat. Yeah, Absolutely. These are activists you talking to you. Jonathan Kelly, this disgusting human being should be ashamed of yourself. You're a mentally ill. Total whack jobs. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, This guy's a soy boy. Have you listened? <laughs> I got fired because I covered a Proud Boys rally and um, I was accused of promoting this group when that wasn't the case. And afterwards, people just started harassing me. Now, he's a scarred journalist. So. He really, he's a good, he, he can, he's a thorough, I mean, uh, he's, he's an apt journalist, thoroughly trained and everything, but they're kind of when you've been scarred a little bit, it might be all, off colored or off centered a little bit. So you're going to have to look at it through his, his, his eyes. And in and, and this case, when you hear him say something, uh, John Cho, when you hear him say something that's a little bit off colored or whatever, just understand that this guy has been harassed by these activists. He's been had death threats. He, uh, you'll see, you'll see. Pay attention. See, they all know him. They don't want me any of their initiatives or projects and they come after me. You have no life. Cause you got fired from Cairo. Cause you got fired from Cairo. Cause you're a proud boy. You're a liar. Get this. They can't stop me. I refuse to be bullied. And that's what these losers are. And we finally made it to Capitol Hill. This is the LGBTQ plus capital of Seattle. It's definitely one of them. It's got a highly concentrated area for the community. And they love you here. Uh, that's what you ask. Okay. <laughs> the communists and the Marxists who are trying to take this over for their land, they want to put the homeless in the front lines and say, hey, you can't move us. That's harmful to the homeless. Basically, what Jonathan is saying is that organizers of Chaz used homeless people and strategically planted them in areas like Cal Anderson Park because, unlike a lot of protesters who might have gone home and slept in their homes at night during the protests, homeless people could be told to pull up a tent and stay there indefinitely. You got it. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Seattle like I was, I was speaking about um, before, but that's that used to be a beautiful park right smack dab in the middle of downtown seattle keep watching numerous tents that have now moved got it how you doing you have this this kid here so, hi there um would you like to say hello not to you guys uh, okay why that there's beef in the end i'm unaware of do you think he knows of who you are? I'm pretty sure he does. They don't like my style. They don't like the fact that I'm exposing them. And uh, they feel as though they are vigilante security guards and that they're protecting this BLM garden and this homeless encampment. How is this being allowed in a public park in a world-class city like Seattle? This is a takeover, Tyler. They got crab. They're eating crab. Is this Let's go. Tyler? I'm never, ever really concerned about the homeless. <laughs> It's always the activists. Clearly anti-cop, okay? A, a trans flag with a black star, and you have the entire trans movement now latching on. Now, Tyler Oliveira, this guy, Jonathan Tro, we're focused on him and his journalistic credibility, but this guy is a wealth of knowledge, and he goes all over the world. So... Pay attention to him as well. Onto this as well. And they'll use the language. Again, on indigenous land. It's a, a message to the white that yeah. this belongs to Native Americans. On the ground here, the homeless, the drug addicts. We're destroying the bathrooms, man. I mean, kids are there to, you know, use the bathroom. They're standing next to needles and needle caps. And there's human feces just smeared yeah. at the walls. It happens everywhere. Oh, yeah. someone's in there. Oh. It happens everywhere. Got it. It's everywhere. Major city. Are you doing fentanyl in there? I'm asking if you're doing fentanyl in there because the bathrooms are being used for drug use. That's everywhere in the United States. Is that a yes or no? These are activists own and run parks, by the way. Not no cops. Remember that. No. Would you like to share your thoughts on what's going on here? I just did. It happens everywhere. Just everywhere. Who, who should... Yeah, the... Who 
What do you think he would do? So I like when people invoke the name of Jesus and the name of Yeshua to try to satisfy their own way of life or whatever. Now, this guy is resting in filth. But just because they have no authority figures around to where they have to truly take care of these areas anymore. You know, I mean, if you ask what would Jesus do in this situation? You know, I don't think that guy would like the answer that he's asking the journalist at this point. But keep watching. Why are you harassing the bathroom? He actually—he is harassing people in the bathroom. That is true. Well, we were actually walking by, and then he said, "He just shouted out, they are harassing people." Now, no one spoke to the guy in the restroom. They were speaking to each other, and the guy in the restroom actually shouted out to them, and they stopped to engage with them. And but all of a sudden. They're harassing him. Yeah, right. Uh, I said it's everywhere. We have it all on camera. Sure. He's gonna, he's just going to try and get a rise out of you. I guess we're having like a, a camera standoff here. But ultimately, <laughs> the conversation is... Camera off. Or left actress is now going to call his comrades and say, look out for you guys. It is comrades. Is that a particular word choice for any given reason? People are commies. So, I mean, that's the yeah. language they use as well. So, okay. If the shoe fits... A lot of these people are wanting to be, you'll hear in the video, they claim to be socialist and communist in a capitalist country. But, I don't know, you hear from me. Who dislikes you in Seattle? People with pink hair and purple hair, calling me transphobic, saying I'm anti-LGBTQ, saying I hate the homeless. Every agenda that they want to champion, they consider me. I'm a boy, tell me. So I don't want you to think we're going to gloss over that. We are talking about activism in a way here, and it's going to be more than a one or two part series because there are different types of activism that we've seen the beginning, middle, and end results in the past 10 years here. Uh, so that's going to be something that we'll attack what you just saw on camera. So we're going to go through all forms of it. I mean, nobody's safe here. Nobody's off limits. We're going to talk about everybody and their movements as they've been recorded for posterity. Where I can record and where I can walk? Are you kidding me? And the funny part is, I'm in of the LGBT. Here we go. Say, so here we go. Did you see someone? Yeah. Anytime there's somebody who's, who has green or purple hair, I get a little nervous, but. It was, it was like yesterday, man, where you had protesters, you know, literally up against the faces of police officers as they formed a, a human wall uh, trying to protect the East Precinct. But we all know the story. City leaders allowed the activists to take over this it. entire city block, and it was just chaos. But for better context from the inside of the protest, let's say goodbye to Jonathan for now and say hello to Mark Anthony. Has anybody here ever heard of the French Revolution before? Does anybody here know what happened to people who did not get on board with the French Revolution? Say it louder. This is not a party, and we have a mission to accomplish. So I met up with Mark to try and understand what actually happened during the protests. CHOP officially started in 2020 on, I would say it was June 8th. It all started with the death of George Floyd. Saw the injustice. Okay, so now George Floyd didn't even happen there, by the way. We're talking about Seattle. So I want you to pay attention to this guy, Mr. Anthony, and this movement CHOP, which stands for Capitol Hill Occupy Protest. Okay? And there were two types of activism that were in play here. There were those that wanted to, quote-unquote, defund the police, and then there were those that just wanted, and, and this would have been the side that I understood, they just wanted justice. If a cop kills a person, a cop should go on trial. Social justice, not injustice. Talking about that adding an adjective to an already powerful, absolute word. Doesn't make much sense to me. Wake up call to come out and be a part of it. It started here, really. This was the intersection. Right People here. were coming here on a daily basis and we were protesting. Okay. And so basically we had, you know, just face off, just protesting, very peaceful. And then that would go on all day and it would go on. They said protesting very peacefully, but you just saw the defund the police sign behind them. Yes, they were protesting peacefully, which is their right. But this goes back to that thesis question. What happens when you get what you ask for? So just keep watching. Guys. Into the night. And during the night, it would get uh, more aggressive. 
host. The level of aggression that the police operated with in response to a few bad players is what led to more and more people showing up. And at this point, the National Guard had been called in. It's not just police we're facing off now with. They were using tear gas on us every night or pepper spray or whatever it is, but essentially it's a chemical weapon. I tried multiple times to have officers come and speak to us. So when you outnumber the police, you just see you just saw that crowd there. Not a car couldn't, a bike couldn't move through that crowd. When you outnumber law uh, authority or, or whatever and i'm not like i'm not taking sides at this point i'm not saying it i'm just i'm talking about the activism part of this right now because you'll see how ineffective it is and, and you'll see how it leads things awry or astray but when you outnumber <clears throat> any group of people 10 to 1 you don't have the right to complain i mean like what are they supposed to do let us know oh, how it okay. felt about the situation. You understand what we saw, the rest of the world saw was yeah, wrong, right. and let us know that you're not with them. After days of protests and clashing with police, on June 7th, a man drove his car towards a crowd near 11th and Pine, and shot a protester who tried to stop him. Chaos ensued, leading the mayor to order the barriers to be moved, and the police evacuate. Okay, so here we go. We're talking about the policy and we're talking about what you just saw there was a city council at work so pay attention to this part this this goes into the crux of the matter here we're in the, we're 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 in occam's razor right here so just pay attention with the precinct the next day boarding it up on their way out as protesters occupied capitol hill with little to no opposition jazz was born when the police first abandoned this building i came that morning and i came expecting the protest and i showed up and i was confused like everybody else i believe the cops left because they realized that the tactics that they were using yeah. to in their mind de-escalate the situation was making it way worse they had no right to it are you kidding me abandoned the people that live in this area. The people that were living here at the time couldn't get adequate medical services. Do you think the cops should have stayed here? If I was in yep. charge of the police, yep. I would not have had them abandon that building. So how do you guys then organize and decide, we're gonna make CHOP or Chaz? That morning, there were still thousands of people that showed up to protest because we didn't know the cops were gone. A lot of people showed up and now we didn't have the same direction of let's go and direct our frustration at the police instead we're just there by ourselves and so we decided instead of just being here and being negative we're going to actually make this a positive space we don't know when the cops are coming back but right now we know that we have this space so real quick what do we think this is what happened here an overdose yeah. is it fentanyl related i have no idea okay overdose can't say i'm surprised yeah There's a lot of drugs in this area at the time when this was going down, there were a few of us who had been protesting from before the area was an Occupy Zone. Okay, so look at that guy right there. So this is what de facto leader of CHOP, this is what they replaced the police with here. They replaced the cops with these guys. Now just pay attention to it. Look, look, at, look at how much fun that they're having. Wait, just watch this, watch this. Myself, look at that, look at, that. He, 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 look at him, he, he's having so much fun. Like, do you want to live in a city with your wife and children or your grandparents, your uncles and aunts, just innocent people, law-abiding people? Do you want to live in a city without cops, but you want to, this, this, is what, this is what you want right here. Now, I'm all for malicious. I'm all for, listen, I could even lean towards a libertarian, past conservative, to be honest with you, um, when it comes to my own personal beliefs. We'll talk about those later, but it, this whole movement was messed up from the word go. So just just pay attention, because if, if he succeeded, if they succeeded here, then we wouldn't be going to the ending that you're going to see. Just to let you know, I'm not we're not we're talking in past tense here. So people at this point were recognizing us as some of the leaders. I gathered a group of people. I said, all right, we got to come up with some new names. And somebody said, well, what about Capitol Hill Occupy protests? Chop. Misconception might be that you guys show up here. We're going to start our own society or civilization. And then they see you guys asking for materials. In reality, it's a protest. It was a protest. Okay. Yeah, this is actually the vice president of my nonprofit. Uh, Tracy was here every day. So you see the list. You won. But now you're going to ask, you're asking for, oh, we need this. You didn't bring it with you? With your defund the police sides and 
certain things. It's more than that. I, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm just. We're highlighting a few things here, and we're we're staying on a path, and we're not telling a truth. We're just telling the truth. We're obviously not talking about the entire hour plus long videos. And just pay attention to the thread we're following here. With me at Chop as well. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay. So we went back to the BLM Garden in Cal Anderson Park to understand how the protesters used homeless people to achieve their goals. Uh, so here we have members from the homeless community and people that are here to help them. So we actually invited the homeless to Chop. And the reason that we invited them is because, as I mentioned, we wanted to defend that police precinct. But we knew people are just going to wait until people are gone in the middle of the night and then they're going to try to break in and damage the building. The best way to make sure that we could get people to stay here regularly was to invite the homeless in. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to come and sleep on the concrete for 30 days. You know, and, and, and Why not, Mr. Anthony? You're the leader of this movement. You're not willing to come and uh, sleep with the lowly troops here? And why are you worried about buildings that you're happy that are not occupied anymore? You're worried about the precinct. Oh, you, you didn't want the cops in the precinct, but you don't want people going into a unpoliced part of town to break in. Let alone, you get the police were, in terms of the laws you guys have passed, the police were there, and there's still a ton of crime going on. So just in a row and it's home. clearly succeeded right and so yeah we said you know what if you guys want to support this movement we yeah. will help support you and so we regularly have food out here for the homeless we were giving away clothes for the homeless and by the way that part's good it's not about it's, it's never been about the homeless and there are too many there are way too many homeless in some areas getting people shelter or even a sense of community i'm all for that that's 100 percent the right thing to do that's 100 percent the right thing to do but there does need to be order, okay? And it's never the homeless. I mean, there's a homeless problem, but we're not blaming people that are down in their luck or lumping them in with the quote-unquote activists that are inept. We're, it's a separate issue. We're going to dive into that as well. Are any of you guys here during CHOP? Why are you this? Uh, it's public property we're just asking a question we don't have to talk well we're just talking about shop yeah we're just taking a look at the garden that was formed here but we see it's a camp we're trying to tear down the garden and that's why we're here oh so you guys are here to prevent the garden being taken down yeah they're trying to, they're trying to take this whole area out and put it in a pickleball court yeah, people are not trustworthy not trustworthy why is that can you explain why we're not trustworthy Please don't film me. I don't pretend to be filmed. Well, can, can you elaborate? I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to elaborate. Please. So why is he frustrated at us trying to leave the garden? They, they, they think you guys are untrustworthy. That you're going to go probably, you might be right wing or something. And you might be publicizing this in a way that might slander us. Got it. Yet despite the strong mistrust, this homeless guy who was here during CHOP came over to talk to me. You were here during CHOP? We're here for all of CHOP. Is there a division and conflict within CHOP from the get-go? No, it was it was, it was was peaceful. It was unity. It went, and then it just it went to hell. And how many people died here while it did last? Yeah, two. Who shot who and why? I don't want to get into that. Okay. Did you see it? Yeah. Okay. Do you think that was the nail in the coffin of CHOP and what it represented at the time? Or? I think so. We've got one person killed, uh, potentially others injured. We don't know. We don't know what the incident was. But the Seattle Police Department cannot go in and has not confirmed. That is correct. How can that stand in America? You guys are that was an apt question. How can that stand in America? Oh, and here's a, a Mr. Simone again here. You're not afraid? There's no way. There's no way. He's dying. He needs your help. This is your job. I wanna... So now inside of the zone where they did not want the police or they do want met. I, I guess they didn't so much as kick out the other social services that our communities are blessed to have, you know. But. They generally wanted to be unpoliced. They want they want to do drugs all on their own without any oversight. But when something actually happens that they don't have because they're not prepared for it. Because they don't know what to do when certain things happen, then they 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 cry out for help. I mean, they they deserve it. Don't get me wrong. Everyone, I mean, like there's a guy right now that's dying. They've kicked out the social services and the police and all that, but now this guy here is just yelling at one of the guys that uh, that they've kicked out of his own. Just listen to what he says. 
make sure that we have not been cleared to move into. You are clear. We're giving you the clear. We will make sure you're clear. If he does. We will we'll make sure you're clear. Not any other time, but right now, we'll make sure you're clear. We need you right now. Guys, it's on you guys. You could have saved his life. You could have, but you're not because it's a black life. And look at this video from live stream camera. And everybody has to play the race car. By the way, the guy that was playing the race car was not an African American guy. So I don't, I don't, I don't get how this always comes to the forefront all of the time. It's justified a lot of the time, but this extreme overcorrection of a cop-free zone, uh, forcibly, basically protested into existence like this is an extreme situation guys it's just before 3 a.m more than a dozen shots are heard video that captures what sounds like more than a dozen gunshots and then at 259 at the very top of your screen you can see that white jeep plow into the cement barricades and it is abundantly clear to our detectives people had been in and out of the car after the shooting mm. detectives are trying to get information from witnesses but as has been the case in other crime scenes up in this area people are not being cooperative with our request for help they uh tried to offer aid they were offering aid for about 25 minutes we were calling police telling them come in you guys are safe we're right here it's very easy to access but we need to get this man to a hospital they don't think Mr. Anthony understands. He's like, you're, you're police, you're safe to come in. Now, when you, you're basically waging war against the police here in this sense where you, you want them out, you kick them out, and you want to police yourselves with Mr. Simone on the streets with his uh, AK-47 in the side holster smiling and laughing, as well as, you know, whatever other factions of CHOP were out there um, policing the area. And the very cops you didn't want around, now you're saying, uh, come in and invest, come, come in and help now. This shooting happened in the middle of that. It, it happened in the middle of downtown Seattle, which I, I get it. Shootings happen all the time. But don't you think that people were emboldened to do that, at, to take that young man's life at this point? Because they knew they had zero chance of being arrested. Zero. And for 25 minutes, I watched that man bleed out on the table. And, man, one of the ugliest things I've ever seen, not just because I witnessed somebody die, but because I also had to witness how the people around were reacting to watching this young man die. Um, a lot of people were just concerned about getting the video on their, their social media and recording it. It was, it was incredibly frustrating. So you watched this young man die in front of your eyes? Yes. Right there? Yeah. But this was our medic station. That's not a medic station. That's a taco restaurant. That's a top. That's a restaurant with benches in front of it. There was a lot of things that was going on um, within Chop. I was on. My Your medical station has nachos written on the door right there. I mean, we're 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 going. This is activism at its finest, guys. I mean, I'm I'm incredibly frustrated, not with activism in its in its self in its purest form, but just what has led us to these type of miscues in society lately with quote-unquote activism. I was assaulted in CHOP as well, and I called the police, and they never showed up. Can you explain the relationship between the police and the protesters at the time, and was one of the goals of CHOP to cut the police funding in half? Separate group. Separate. separate group? That was a separate group, because again, like I said, there was two sets of protesters. There okay. was the protesters who wanted to defund the police, and there was the pro Which, very wrong. And that's the part that, that's the part that, that mainly, um, it took over. That was the part that took over that nobody should have been a part of. But the other part that she kind of alludes to right now is, is, is that's part that, that, that's, that's a part I agree with in a sense just like myself who wanted to keep the police but maybe um hold them accountable my question has <laughs> always been why Justice. did the police evacuate their building Seattle PD yeah maybe I can ask him were you here then you gotta ask the guy beside you why did they why did they leave ask the guy that was in uh, the guy right beside you you're the quote unquote you're the quote unquote vice president ask your president of shop why the police were actually Compelled to leave. Shop by chance? 
Do you have any thoughts on it? No. <laughs> they don't want to talk. They don't want to talk that they abandoned a motherfucking police station. Excuse my language. As we walked to the police precinct that was abandoned by the police, leading to the formation of CHOP, Mark began to share why he thinks the government's current stance on drugs and harm reduction is racist. Why has it become a white supremacy thing? Because a lot of it is geared towards the white community. Now look at the 90s during the crack epidemic. Crack cocaine. The problem is crack cocaine. They were en masse beating black people, throwing them in jail, locking them up for as long as they could. And now we see, let's decriminalize it. Let's give them, make sure that they get free housing. Look at how the response was different from white to black. They have reversed their stance when it's white people that are the ones that are overdosing, doing the crime and drugs. Now all of a sudden we need to decriminalize this. You're so. saying if these were... Okay, so there's some truth what he's saying there, but you can see how these issues are always being conflated when an, an activist or a protest group, they don't get exact, or they get exactly what they want and they realize they don't want it because you can't, you can't participate in retroactive activism, okay? He's talking about the race part here. Yes, in the crack, the, the crack epidemic in the 80s and when drugs were treated like a crime, he's talking about how basically these are the same drugs or even worse drugs. And because the majority of people that are falling prey to them are not of, uh, are not of a brown or, or dark brown hue, how they're decriminalizing it now and trying to help these people, which goes awry in itself because they're not trying to help them. They're trying to enable them. But just because people can get help now, I mean, we, we don't have to point out that they didn't get help back then. What's done is done. I mean, honestly, the injustice and going, when we go back into all these, the crack epidemic of the eighties and, you know, the, Jim Crow era, and I mean, we go back in all these eras, they're infuriating. I mean, you can't, no one can agree with these eras, but you conflate the issue with what you're, how do you go from shops and running this infamous faction of, of protesters to talking about the crack epidemic in the 80s? Like, what does one thing have to do with the other? Like, I mean, I, 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 I personally can follow, but when a person's trying to make a point, they they jump from one to four and four to eight. You know, they don't they don't take the absolute steps that they need to take to to make people understand their position fully. For predominantly black the stance would be different. What it is in general. Okay. When white people are going through something, the government will step in and help them. Oh, the farmers are having crop spelling? Oh, you're going to get all kind of grants and this and that. Do you think the United States is one of the most racist nations out there? The. I think that they were victimized in the past and they are still being victimized now. Activism seemed to be within the DNA of Seattle. And I saw a free Palestine rally in downtown Seattle that same day. From your perspective, do you see any parallels to what we discussed in shop and this? Yeah, once again, I see it as a genocide. I see it as people of a different ethnicity, of a different skin tone than the European descent that is the, the majority and dominant race. And for the last six weeks, they've been launching a genocide against completely innocent women and children. The average age of the fatalities in God's is five years old. And all I'm saying is, Israel, it has a right to exist. Imagine if you're an American and we had people from another country come over and rape murder and torture 1200 people here palestinians were offered a country okay three times offered three times not accepted okay i'm just saying educate yourself about the real history so men this, grandmothers yeah what i'm saying is if you're trying to negotiate with an organization leaves in your total annihilation how do you negotiate with them any points of education someone watching might in the last section here, you know, when, when Chop goes from the, uh, the inner downtown area of, of running what they ran, and, and it didn't last so long, guys. That's why you, you're seeing different areas of a uh, of video here because protests are still going on, obviously, and they still work, they're still going on in Seattle right now, the Israel-Palestine conflict, but it's different from what we just came from through the Chop thing. and. And they touched on racism. Now, before I, they, they moved strictly from racism to the Israel-Palestine conflict. 
So we're going to jump into that in a second. Right now, we're going to take a break and hear from our sponsors, and we will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. For almost the past 30 years, Nutrimart has been one of the leading vitamin, supplement, health brands, and a pillar in the San Diego community. Now boasting eight stores in San Diego, this family-owned brand has a full-service online store for those of us in this part of the country, and they cater to all athletes, crossfitters, health nuts, Yo Mama, Bo Jackson, Frodo and his hobbits, Han Swolo, Darth Sith Pack, coaches, and a plethora of so many different sports enthusiasts across the country. And like those that order this product from coast to coast, you too can use Nutrimart for all your health needs. Find all the best national brands in vitamins, meal replacements, testosterone, libido enhancers, greens, herbs, protein bars, fat loss aids, muscle builders, and more. And order today from NutrimartUSA.com. That's NutrimartUSA.com. We'll put the address on the screen below and you can start your order today. Don't miss out now. Go to NutrimartUSA.com. Check out their vast array of products and order today and get your swole on, people. Now back to the show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, sticking with us down this depressive rabbit hole, if you will, of activism. <laughs> We're about to jump into another ism uh, that stemmed from activism in that same exact city, born from their misplaced defund the police type racial and now spiritual because they're bringing religion and race into this next segment. So it's so much that happened in Seattle in so little time. I mean, the dominoes just fail. And yeah, when I tell you that, and I was in San Diego at the time and I was traveling a little bit. I mean, I was in LA a lot of the time, which I saw a lot of what's going on. I was in Sacramento, uh, nine hours away from San Diego. I was, I was all up and down California. So that part of the country, yeah, it's just like this part of the country. You know what's going on right around you. You know what's going on in Georgia and Texas and, and you know, up to even Florida. Well, everybody knows what's going on in Florida. <laughs> but, um, you know, Florida is the... Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about Florida right now, but yes, it was very, it was borderline insane at the time. So, but what we're gonna go into now is we're going to uh, stop and let Tyler here, Tyler Oliveira, which I say his journalistic credibility, I respect this guy so much. You follow this guy; he has about six point two million followers or subscribers, and. He does his due diligence. He goes to all of the bad places. We'll talk about that in the future, but uh, just watch what happens to him when he goes down this street, downtown Seattle. All right, stay safe. Bye. Only a block away, I stumbled upon the black Hebrew Israelites preaching on the streets. Hey, what's going on here? We're out here to actually teach our people who they truly are. And who are your people? Representing uh, black people? Israelites, God's okay. chosen people. God said that he created his chosen people, the Israelites, which would be the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of today, to be above all other nations of people that are upon the face of the earth. What did the Lord, Most High God say about the other people? They are nothing, uh -huh. but be like unto spittle. But be like unto spittle. I'm going to pause right there. So he said, his cho he said God's chosen people are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of today. Okay, so... It's my humble opinion because as a Christian, guys, I got to tell you, um, I am I are on the side of caution. To get God's word wrong or to study something and not understand it is one thing. And then to, to not just use his word, but to use your quote unquote, your own intellect to try to explain things and put God at the forefront. Like that's just downright foolish. Don't pretend to know the mind of God and things where he, he there's nowhere in his in his word where he said that blacks, Native Americans and Hispanics are the Israelites of today. 
are the chosen people of today. Now, I, I grant you, a lot of us are misplaced, and I know that there are, uh, we're talking about Israelites, you know, hey, some of us are, I, 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 we're not going to go, we're not going to go into that conversation now, but you got to listen to how people pepper in things. They, they'll tell part of the truth, and they'll pepper in other things to try to make you follow them. And you can come for me if you want. Just, we talk about all the things here, but when you talk about Jehovah's Witnesses or you talk about Mormons or someone else that supplement the book, they supplement the word with their own man-made publication to help them follow, not God, but follow a certain tradition or a certain religion or whatever. He's going to get into that, and you're going to see exactly, you're going to see this guy. He's he's a trip. Keep watching. So that's how we take one phrase out of a whole chapter or a whole verse and use it for our own purposes. You know how those how people will say certain things like God said, Don't judge lest she be judged. Have you read the entire verse? Like don't take God's word out of context. That's like that's a red flag in terms of if you are looking to deepen your faith, you know, because our intellect and our little so called wisdom you can take all the knowledge in the world these smartest people that ever lived you know and our intellect can't touch god's wisdom his word doesn't need any help that's what certain tribes certain factions try to do we try to help god you know it's weird it's a weird thing using god's word out of context god that's is not in support of whatever may happen in gaza is that kind of what's going on yes god is all in support of war okay. uh, but i gotta answer your so, question through the Bible. so god is anti-peace pro-war that's right Right? Interesting, okay. Yeah, he's not about peace. The Lord is a man of war. Uh-huh. Even all the way back in the Bible days. That's not all the word of God is about. The entire word of God from Old Testament to New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, is about Yeshua. This man said that Caucasians were made to be destroyed. I'm going to let that rest in the air there. Because God did destroy nations. God destroys, and he, or God destroyed pagan nations in the Old Testament, and our God is a jealous God. So anybody, any, and I'll tell you what, we're not even going to go down that rabbit hole. Not yet. It's too early. We're just going to, we're just going to keep going on. Top enemies of God from God's perspective, uh -huh. as you've interpreted the Bible. Uh -huh. Okay, Caucasians, yep. uh, Chinese, Chinese yeah. Japanese, Arabs, Arabs, and then modern day Jew, Jews. Yeah, and then the modern day Jewish man. He created them to be destroyed, right? So. I was created to be destroyed? Yes, because that's why the Most High God says... That's weak! As someone who may not agree with your religious beliefs, uh -huh. should I have any incentive or interest in doing so if my whole means of existence is just to die and to be destruction? That's a very good question. Yes, oh. you should take interest Should I just kill myself at this point? I'm going to show you what you're going to have to do right. to get mercy in the Lord's okay. kingdom. Any of the other nations that are not Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans who are God's chosen people, if these other nations want to have mercy in the Most High God's kingdom, the entire nation has to repent for what they've done. Okay, repentance, we, rep now that's something, that's a point he should have actually gone into. So, I want to know what he means by repentance. I want to know what he means by that. And he uses that phrase, that phraseology. It's obviously a biblical word or a spiritual word, you know, but when he uses repent, I want to know what he means. Wait, 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 hold on. What, sorry for what? What did I do? Well, you're walking on solid ground. Right. What? Didn't, didn't this land, before it was renamed Seattle, wasn't it called Duwamish? What did I do? Oh, your nation of people, right, enslaved, right, the Native Americans and the Hispanics here in America. And the Most High God judges as a nation. But America as a whole is prophesied to be destroyed with international continental ballistic missiles. That's right. IBM? Unless, right, unless they show, right, that they are sorry for what their forefathers have done, right, to our people. That you will bow down with both knees with your face towards the earth. Are you? Not gonna happen, no. See that? What did I do? Let's slow down here a little bit. God is racist, right? God is racist. Well, that was one of the first verses that we brought up when you came up was Deuteronomy 7 and 6, okay. that he chose the Israelites to be above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Isn't right. that racist? So you, so you are racist? Yeah, is it wrong? Is, is, let me say this. There's nothing wrong with being racist. God is racist. And so he just said a blasphemous statement. God is racist. 
God created all of us, and there's only one race. We're all different hues, but God created, I mean, like, people that use religion to separate, they use spirituality to separate, and you're talking about people that come up in all, you know, all Caucasian churches, and they don't want to worship and serve with God's children, or all uh, brown-skinned people churches, and they don't want to worship or or serve with God's people. I mean, like, we're the one that create these divides and these divisions. This is us. God is not racist. Racist means that you're just for your people. White privilege. Right. Okay, so I'm a beneficiary of white privilege. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. After hearing you guys out, I've decided that I'll get on my knees. Psych! I do anything! I'm innocent! I'm out of here! I'm innocent! Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> all right so that was pretty funny so that was that was a little that was a, a little detour to a really okay so god is not the author of confusion and this type of activism has trickled down and just the spirit in the air it seems it's there it's everywhere actually where now it's like things that don't make sense seem to be what how what, what everybody's following i mean like th it, that that to me was wild that was very wild um i just i don't i really don't understand i don't understand how they think i don't understand how they try to lead people when they can i mean like people like that if i had that mindset and i don't but i have a mindset of follow i need to follow not just follow because I, I'm learning. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a, what's considered I shouldn't be because I'm, I'm older. But I'm what's considered a babe in Christ because you know what I did. I really followed my hedonistic lifestyle for a certain amount of time, and uh, I didn't shun God. I guess you could probably say I did, in spite of Him always being there calling to me. But that. That religion, that religious, whatever that just was right there, be wary of that, people. When you are looking because, by the way, anybody brings race into worshiping God. And I'm not talking about, you know, in opposition to God. If you're against God. If you are part of this world, this world system, yes, you are an enemy to God. I'm not talking about that i'm just talking about race in general you'll go up to a white person or a caucasian person excuse me or a person of a different persuasion than you and say you are not god's chosen people he is racist towards you i would be afraid to be to, to preach that gospel personally i'm afraid I, i'm like I'm, I'm at this point right now i'm working out my my salvation and fear and trembling as paul stated in the new testament and uh you know i've been bad enough but uh False teaching, That's to me, that just didn't make much sense. But we're going to uh, take a small break, go to our sponsors, and then we're going to come back and we're going to get into, uh, we're going we're gonna to finish this thing out. We're, we're done with that little sidestepping thing, but the homeless, which is the people that have been caught in the middle of activism and, and laws being passed and how they're living there. We're going to go into all that in a second, so we'll be right back. For almost the past 30 years, Nutrimart has been one of the leading vitamin, supplement, health brands, and a pillar in the San Diego community. Now boasting eight stores in San Diego, this family-owned brand has a full-service online store for those of us in this part of the country, and they cater to all athletes, crossfitters, health nuts, Yo Mama, Bo Jackson, Frodo and his hobbits, Han Swolo, Darth Sith Pack, coaches, and a plethora of so many different sports enthusiasts across the country. And like those that order this product from coast to coast, you too can use Nutrimart for all your health needs. Find all the best national brands in vitamins, meal replacements, testosterone, libido enhancers, greens, herbs, protein bars, fat loss aids, muscle builders, and more. And order today from NutrimartUSA.com. That's NutrimartUSA.com. We'll put the address on the screen below and you can start your order today. Don't miss out now. Go to NutrimartUSA.com. Check out their vast array of products and order today and get your swole on, people. 
Now back to the show. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for staying with us. We are so happy to have you here at All the Things, presented by Euphonic Creations. So we're going to go into another small section of this video. And uh, so one of the, the outcomes of not having police there, to police the actual public and be things running rampant okay so things that you're not things that you don't want your children to see now should all of us suffer because some police are corrupt and some police are quote unquote racist and some police will abuse does that mean that we want to get rid of all of the police and live in a city where you can basically do what you want. And outside of an outcry of, you shouldn't do that. I mean, like, what? nobody's going to stop certain people from doing things except the police. Like like this here. Watch this. Okay. Let's go on here. You guys can see me. This is just a... This is an American tragedy, man. You see, you got, you got cop cars. They don't come out. They, they, that's the problem. Hey, quick, question, question. I even tried to wave them down. I could be bleeding out. I could be bleeding out, right? Yeah, I don't know why they're not stopping. Okay, what is this? I literally picked this up on the ground. This is what you call harm reduction. reduction. Sure. These supplies are fueling this drug epidemic on the streets. This is taxpayer dollars. You have needles, you have fentanyl test strips. All we're doing is enabling this. Why does it mean different? Because we don't want you to OD. Yeah, we don't want you to die. In moderation. The whole Bible says that you guys moderation. are self moderating. Absolutely. Okay. Have you seen people overdose out here and die? No. You've not seen a single person? I've seen, I've seen people be accused of overdosing, but they're still breathing. Do you think people are dying due to fentanyl out here? No. Not at all. Ma'am, ma'am, we just want to make sure you don't die on the streets. Exactly. I think okay. we're in, the, in agreement, though. Okay. We'll, we'll get out of your hair, though. She's nodding out. Ma'am, are you okay? Okay. I just want to make sure. Sure, I get it. You gotta check. Very sad for her. That so that when it comes to not having a place where police can police fully, those are just a few of the problems that you see that some people are 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 running into. But that's not it, though. I mean, like to be honest with you, how about if you and your spouse wanted an evening out at a nice restaurant, just walking down the city, just. How about running into this yeah. here? And he's having some sort of reaction to drugs. Uh, what do you think that is? I think mean, that's a product of this, the living on the streets, man. Every do you day, think he's overdosing on something, something? Like this. I don't think he's overdosing. I think he's experiencing what he's experiencing. We have a family pushing their, their baby carriage right through it. Right past. I have a question for you, sir. What are your thoughts on that? You're walking with your family. You see something like that. Is that a concern of yours as a Seattleite? Uh, it is, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Are you tired of seeing things like that? I mean, I, I should hope that it's a solvable problem by now with all of the tax money that we're paying. But unfortunately, that we see different variations of that okay. constantly. Normally, they're members of the homeless community, uh, people that are outcasts from society, things sure. like that. He's, people are avoiding and walking around. He, and they're ignoring him. Sure. They're, we're ignoring this problem like it's not a problem that we should be trying to focus on finding solutions for. It could be a dangerous situation for you. Sure. You don't know how he's going to react. I, I want to offer him help. Dude's bleeding from his face right now. Sure. But I don't know how he's going to react to me. He's going he to put my life in danger, possibly. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a lack of governmental leadership. Okay. What would you change in the governmental leadership if you could change something? January 6th, none of them had walked out of there alive. Okay. Another overcorrection. There you go. You got it. You have a. You have a. Uh, a January 6th uh, uh, believer there. Did you hear him? Now that's so. My whole thing about activism nowadays so it's an overcorrection to the right or to the left. We don't want what's best for the society as a whole. We just don't. Because you can't say something like that and say that's the solution to the problem. He said that January 6th, none of the politicians would have walked out there alive. Total conflation, total overcorrection of just an issue when you're seeing on these liberal streets. Yes, uh, the government has failed here in Seattle, as well as other major cities we'll go into that later but 
how could that be the answer? Like, so the reason that they're asking like this, just anywhere, they're, they're around a bunch of drug addicts and everything right now on the streets you'll see soon. But what the city has provided for homeless people and drug addicts out there, not only is it fentanyl um, to try to help people uh, kick or <clears throat> live with their addiction, not kick, but live with their addiction, but they provide the public in general with Narcan as well. Which is a highly potent drug, and it helps. It it it's it's a, a uh, how do you explain? It? Look up Narcan. You'll see exactly what it is. I don't want to sound foolish up here with my my way of saying it, but they provide the public with Narcan. If somebody is overdosing, you shoot them up with Narcan. You get them Narcan, it'll it's an adrenaline. Boost. It'll it'll get you out of that. But that's why they are literally just a journalist and a civilian looking at somebody overdose on the street or they thought was overdosing. This guy decided to call 911. It would be interesting if I set a timer to see how long it takes for anyone to get here. If What do you guys think about what's going on here? Hey, pal. Seattle. Seattle. Thank you. Can you wake up, pal? Anybody have Narcan? Anyone have Narcan? Anybody have Narcan? Can you wake up, pal? Anyone have Narcan? Potential overdose? We got Narcan out here. We have an ambulance on route. Yeah, he's back. Oh, okay, he's out. Probably broke his nose, it looks like. Actually, quite quickly, to give Seattle PD some credit here, that was a three minute, 53 second response. EMT's on site. It's drug related and he doesn't want medical attention. Why is that? That's what he doesn't want. Is he sure. of the mental capacity, given his current state, to even make that like no. uh, assertion? The only time that we would do anything against his will is if he meets certain criteria by the state for an emergent detention, Got which it. is danger to self, danger to others, um, unable to care for self. What would it strike you as from your experience? Uh, we're seeing a resurgence in meth again. Meth? So. Well, it looks like he decided to get some help. I'm glad, because he was refusing at first. Will a guy like that end up back in that same van? Some folks that I've run into that are be on their second or third or OD for the day, which at that point we start looking at emergent detention criteria. Yeah. All right, thanks for your time. See ya. It's not safe for anybody. They're shouting out to the rest of the, the homeless people there and the drug addicts. Do anybody have Narcan? And the only way that the police, or well, the police wouldn't come, but the only way that social services come into downtown Seattle is when someone calls 911 and it's a life or death thing and they're saying it's life or death. They don't police small crime, really. They stop doing that for a while. Yep. See that? Danger to self, danger to others. They'll, they'll come out and answer that. He met up back with, with John Cho in downtown Seattle again, where they just were was not downtown Seattle. It wasn't in the, the, the chopped, chopped zone, bad zone, whatever. Because of the darkness of the night that was quickly approaching, we said goodbye to Mark and met back up with Jonathan here because apparently this block transforms into a hot spot for open air drug use and crime. We've made it to Third and Pike, the infamous intersection here. We're about to see the worst of the worst, if anything is out here tonight. Last night, Jonathan said it was zombie land. Jonathan, where are we at right now? This is the gateway for tourists here in downtown Seattle. Um, at the same time, it is a notorious epicenter for open air drug use. If we go in there and, and with iPhones, you're, there's going to be a reaction. Okay, it, I mean, it's not going to be a good reaction. So, have you ever had any violent encounters over here? Yeah, man. This is where I've been chased by a guy wielding a knife. A guy, you know, swung a baseball bat at me, and this is a very common path. I run down the street all the time. Fentanyl's everywhere. Yep, yep. John Show has been chased with nunchucks. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny. Like, without, <laughs> without, uh, it's just funny. It's not funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so what we're getting into right now <clears throat> will be bandwagoners. Now, this guy in the white, I want you to pay attention to him, his little segment. He's going to be on here a couple times. There are not many people as evil as this guy. And you'll, you'll, you won't be able to tell right away, but I just want you to see what police-free zones and... Uh, harm re 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 reduction causes so so it's a fentanyl crisis globally right hundred well united states so they're out here just giving out free fentanyl really it's a non-profit organization this is cap 
right no here. captain. You guys are stoned right now. Wait, whoa. Oh, so you guys actually are giving out. And we're yeah. cool. Yeah, you want one? Yeah. You guys are giving free fentanyl? Yeah, you want one? This want, is real? Who wants free fentanyl? Line up. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, he has a bag of. Line up. Come wait, wait, wait. Why are you doing this? Free moves. Line up. This is clearly a chaotic evil force at play here. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know about this. You're gonna kill someone. Look, here, come on. That's Guys, no. Get in line. Oh, no. go tell everybody to get in line. Hey, you guys wait, gonna, wait, why are you giving this? It's gonna overdose someone. Because this is how you clean up the streets. How? You give it away for free. Yes. You're I... giving away free fentanyl for what reason? Yes. Wow. Okay. And, and the government will pay for it all. Now, you activists don't have to claim him. You activists don't have to claim him. But you do. That's your man. He's on. He's in the group in the crowds with you. If the police show up, he, he's on your side. How stupid he looks. That's not the end of him. Just wait. I heard this. How you guys doing? Do you guys mind sharing a little more, real quick? A little more about what? What your angle is and what you guys are up to? Violence or or fentanyl? Gun what? violence? Everything. I support all of it. So let's kill everything with a smile. Got it. So you want them to die while high? Yes. So are we getting trolled here? What's... I have no idea. Right here, guys. That's the same guy in the white uh, sweatshirt out there handing out free fentanyl from a quote-unquote non-profit, guys. Handing out drugs on the street. Back in the day when you used to sell drugs on the street, heavy drugs, not let alone give them out, you would get arrested. That, that's if the, the, the cops were around. But listen to him. This guy's evil. Listen. He said, let's kill everything with a smile. So him get it, giving out free fentanyl to drug addicted people, to people who can't say no. And their path is their own path, obviously, but he's an enabler. Bleeding people to their death. And he just said, sitting in that car with a smile on his face, he supports it all. Violence, fentanyl, kill them all. Let them die with a smile on their face. If that's not the very... Definition of evil. I don't know what it is. Well, guys, if you never have been to Seattle before, you would have to have seen it before just to know how much of a tragedy it is. It used to be a beautiful city. Downtown Seattle. State laws make public drug use and possession a gross misdemeanor, allowing city attorneys to prosecute the drug charges. A misdemeanor, not a felony. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah. Just driving off like cops don't stop. They don't do anything in downtown Seattle anymore. <laughs> if we go from last week to this week and, and going down the rabbit hole, we're going we're going to call this. Maybe it'll be a series when it's all said and done. The rabbit hole of reality, because a lot of people like to bring conspiracy theories uh, or bring or, or say it, tell you that in a derogatory form. You're a conspiracy theorist or you're, you know, whatever terminology terminology they use for people that are against or not against but just don't participate in group think people that think for themselves and look at things and call them what they are as opposed to going with mob mentality in their group of whether it's political or cultural or whatever you know when you can think for yourself and when you can call a spade a spade for some odd reason you're kind of looked at sideways you got to be careful so what we're going to do is, you know, I'm far more depressive than, you know, what I am now. And I, I'll probably watch a lot more. I do research on a daily basis. I'm watching these videos and getting acquainted with this stuff or re reacquainted in long form for you guys. I mean, uh, I'm ashamed to say or I'm sad to say that even just for my own personal entertainment purposes, I don't watch happy stuff. I watch, I watch things like this in my personal time. Not just for work, but, you know, it's it's just one of those things where it's just sad, people, from the food that they, they put in, they, they, they're, uh, they're only giving you or mainly giving you to put in your body to the environment that, that you're in. It can all seem very hopeless, but I assure you, there's a light at the end of this tunnel, guys. I assure you, without doubt, 100%. And uh, we have a... We have a savior in heaven that's advocating for us every day. Though days here are not going to be as good as they once were. We always say the good old days as older people, you know. And though, though we'll never experience those days here again, we, we, we will someday on the other side of the veil. It's not 
all that. But I'd like to thank you guys for staying with us here. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're engaged at the bottom. We're about to start boosting things as well. So it's not just going to be 7, 10, 20 here or there. We got to get the word out there. Make sure you share your videos, share the videos with your friends, and uh, hit that bell on the bottom as well so you'll know exactly when we come out with a new one every Friday. We're trying to make that date every single week. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for being with us. And what we're going to do now is send it to our sponsors you know one last word in for our spot for our sponsor nutrimart and then uh we're going to be up thank you guys for hanging with us we will see you again for almost the past 30 years Nutrimart has been one of the leading vitamin, supplement, health brands, and a pillar in the San Diego community. Now boasting eight stores in San Diego, this family-owned brand has a full-service online store for those of us in this part of the country, and they cater to all athletes, crossfitters, health nuts, Yo Mama, Bo Jackson, Frodo and his Hobbits, Han Swolo, Darth Sith Pack, coaches, and a plethora of so many different sports enthusiasts across the country. And like those that order this product from coast to coast, you too can use Nutrimart for all your health needs. Find all the best national brands in vitamins, meal replacements, testosterone, libido enhancers, greens, herbs, protein bars, fat loss aids, muscle builders, and more. And order today from NutrimartUSA.com. That's NutrimartUSA.com. We'll put the address on the screen below and you can start your order today. Don't miss out now. Go to NutrimartUSA.com. Check out their vast array of products and order today and get your swole on, people. Now back to the show.